I recognize the ranking member for five minutes of questioning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Jones, you talked about uh, that Congress should take extreme action. Uh, let me tell you what was in uh, the last omnibus package that we passed in 2023. Uh, we provided $17 billion for customs and border protection, including an increase in spending by 17% over the previous year. Uh, it allowed for hiring operations along the southwest border. We also provided funding for 19,855 Border Patrol agents, an increase of over 300 agents, uh, the most since 2011. Uh, we also appropriated $60 million more to hire 125 Customs and Border Protection officers and mission support staff at our ports of entry. But I'd also tell you, not a single Republican on this committee voted for it. It was passed only by Democrats. We're the ones who are trying to put by the resources to the good men and women along the border who are addressing this. Every time an opportunity presents itself to put resources on the border, Democrats are the ones who vote for it. You know, you can talk tough, but when it comes time as a member of Congress, you really need to vote your conviction. So if you don't give the men and women the money they need to help protect us, then that's our fault. But thank goodness the Democrats in Congress gave the money that was asked for by the department. We need more. And I look forward to when the next time that people ask for money, like I hear you talking about uh, resources, that they'll vote for it because that's the only way we can address this problem. The other situation, as I said, I've been on the committee a long time. Uh, responsible men and women can disagree, but there's a way you can be disagreeable. Uh, I understand the witnesses on the Republican side. This is a great democracy, and it's, it's only great because of the men and women who live in it. It's not a personal attack. It's just the facts. And, and I hope, Mr. Moss, you, underst you understand that. Uh, but be that as it may, there are some policy differences. I think nine hearings on this subject is a bit much. I am embarrassed at that. Uh, because we are wasting time trying to impeach a secretary when we ought to be providing our men and women along the border resources. Uh, I've never voted against the Homeland Security budget since the department was created. I don't plan to ever vote against it because it's not the right thing to do. Now, I'll disagree with this chairman. I disagree with that chairman. And we'll, we'll probably continue, but we are adults. And I just think as long as we act as adults, uh, we'll get things done. People around the world look at us. Uh, they want to be like us. But what I see happening and trying to disagree and trying to somehow take it to another level is just not who we are. And, and so, uh, Dr. Clayton Brown, can you tell me what kind of programs you've seen that have been helpful along the border in addressing this problem? Certainly, improving technologies um, so that inspections of vehicles, cargo, and people crossing the border can be intensified is a very useful measure. <clears throat> The CBP several years ago stated that it is only capable of inspecting about 2% of personal vehicles crossing and about 17% of cargo vehicles. Raising that number uh, to a much higher level, especially because the vast majority of fentanyl is seized and very likely smuggled through legal ports of entry, 
is a good way of reducing uh, the amount of um, fentanyl coming into the United States. It's not a sufficient policy. A whole of government approach needs to be adopted. Increasing collection <coughs> intelligence on a variety of activities that the criminal cartels, Mexican cartels, engaging. Deploying various tools, various agencies of the United States to be able to facilitate U.S. law enforcement work. Thank you. Yield back. The gentleman yields. I recognize the gentleman from Texas.